Intel reported fiscal year 2022 fourth quarter earnings results late in January that really disappointed the market. The stock was down as as high as 10% in the aftermath of the announcement. So let's look at what had investors so disappointed about Intel's recent earnings announcement. Starting with overall revenue, which decreased by 32% in the fourth quarter to $14 billion. That's a dramatic decrease. A loss per share of $0.16 cents was dramatically down from an earnings per share of $1.13 in the fourth quarter of 2021. This business is just not built for revenue at these lower levels, right? It's built to have higher scale, its manufacturing capacity, its labor force, all of that is built for a higher production scale. And so when revenue collapsed so significantly, it turned into a, a big loss on the bottom line. Unfortunately, that's expected to persist. But going on, uh, gross profit margin decreased to 39.2% in the fourth quarter. This was down from 53.6% in the same quarter last year. Again, this was mainly due to operating at a much smaller scale than it's built out for. So that's causing some uh, inefficiencies in terms of production. Uh, so, of course, unsurprisingly, major cost cuts are underway. Three billion planned for 2023, and nine billion planned for 2025. Significant cost cuts coming from from Intel. Uh, interestingly, the gross profit margin would have been even worse had Intel not made this adjustment. They increased the estimate of useful life of production of machinery and equipment from five years to eight years. What this did is this significantly decreased its depreciation expense. And so it made its uh, gross profit margin look better than it would have by several hundred basis points. So it's saying that, you know what? We thought we were going to be able to use this per, uh, machinery and equipment for five years. Instead, now we believe we can use these equipment for eight years. And so now it, instead of depreciating $100 over five years, which would be $20 per year, it's now depreciating $100 over eight years, which is a smaller depreciation expense per year. So it's spread out longer, but it's um, it, favorable for this year's comparison because last year it was spread out. Uh, it was you, the... A income statement accounted for the five-year useful life, right? So now they're accounting for eight, uh, using the adjustment for eight years. So looking forward, the company expects these headwinds to continue, forecasting 11 billion of revenue in Q1, a gross profit margin significantly lower to 34.1%. That would be down from 39.2% and the loss per share of 80 cents. So the headwinds are going to persist according to management. First, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Management did say that they think that the second ha second part of the year could be better. They had forecast for industry PC unit sales between 270 and 285 million units for 2023. They updated that forecast saying now it's it's probably going to be on the lower end of that range. So we can ignore the 280 million and above part of that forecast and and expect something in the 270s or or maybe even below that if things continue to worsen. So uh, looking at these figures, we can understand why investors did not like the results they saw from this quarter and why the stock was down so significantly in the aftermath of the release of these figures. All right, so that's all I've got for this video. I'll be doing a deeper dive into micro, uh, into Intel in uh, future videos, so stay tuned for those deeper dives into Intel's most recent quarter's results. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.